It's powerful when you saw it in hundreds because there's a portal over your life for Jesus to blow your mind financially because he know that you give him out of faith, not out of obligation because obliga obligation given is, is false. Obligation given is, uh, it, it is uh, boring. But you give out a revelation. That's what you sow with passion. You sow with the angels. You sow with the angels. Write that down. You sow it with angels. When you sow it with angels, that's powerful. When you sow it with angels. When you sow it with angels, that's the power of God. That's the glory of God. When you sow it with angels. When you sow it with angels, it's powerful. Because... open over your in the thousands, you stop all form of poverty. If you ever sold a thousand dollar seed, you don't stop poverty in your life. You ain't got to worry about that. If you ever sow a thousand dollar seed or you sow in the thousands, you are now in position to receive in the thousands. So expect thousand dollar miracles going to float in your sowing to not eat the seed and not stop at the level that you sow it, but to go higher if you ever met a soul uh, uh, a trainer a trainer don't let you work out at your comfort zone the trainer push you to go higher the trainer will fight you to not stop doing the push-ups say no no give me five more give me five more that's what i'm doing with the sewing What's up? Now, when we dealing with the power of God, that's 
the power of God moving in the direction of prosperity and, and the grace to live in wealth. One thing that you want to study from wealth or people that are wealthy is their ability to not be moved by emotions. One quality that you want to catch about somebody that is wealthy is that they are not moved by emotions. They're not moved by the natural realm and their mind has adapted to diligence thinking, diligence thinking, diligence thinking. Jesus does this all the time. Why are you thinking the Bible says, though we are faithless, he remains faithful. That's diligence thinking. Why did the Bible say that until the word of the Lord came to pass in Joseph's life, he kept obeying. It was diligence thinking. Why after Daniel hears that the law is passed, that you can't go to God or man in 30 days, why does he open up the window and he begins to pray three more times. Diligence thinking. Why does Jesus go from saying not my will. To your will be done. Instead of take this cup from me. Diligence thinking. Why does Ruth have her own husband die? And before she gets angry with God. Before she starts uh, disrespecting God. Her response is, your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. Diligence thinking. Isaac is in a famine. He want to leave the place. Oftentimes, you want to leave places because that's the place where you're going to be processed. Children of God has a tendency to leave places where they're going to be processed. Running from God. Running from God. Running from God. Oh, I don't want nobody to talk about me. Yeah, but that's where you're going to be processed. Running from God. Oh, no, I don't want my family to reject me. That's where you're going to be processed. Running from God. Oh, I don't want nobody lying on me at the workplace. That's where you're going to be processed. Running from God. Often, saints, you know what Jesus was doing? Jesus is the apostle of power. He fearless. Why is Jesus up there telling some father, if this not, can you take this cup from me? He's reenacting what you often do. Remember, he had to become sin, which you were sin. He had to become everything that you were. So he became running from God to cancel that spirit off of you. Jesus became running from God. Why does he tell us the Father, can you take this cup from me? That's running from God. Now, I'm saying some of y'all beat your children because they won't drink the juice. Boy, you still got the juice in the cup. I told you a long time ago, drink the juice. That's why his head big. The woman up there trying to rub his head when he turned 33. But she can't fit her head around his head. You, you got swollen marks. Colon marks. <laughs> he can't even wear a normal size hat. Because you done beat him on top of the head. <laughs> this ain't how you whoop no child. It, you, you done daggered him. You done killed him. He really brain dead. You just don't know. You done shot him in the head. You done daggered him in the head. His head swollen for life. Every time he say amen, he get a headache. <laughs> in church, the pastor be like, amen? He be like, nah, I ain't falling for the trick. <laughs> I know you're trying to trick me. Nah, I ain't saying nothing. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I pick my hand up like this here. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't shaking no amen. Pastor be like, son, uh, do you receive the Lord as your Lord and Savior? I ain't doing nothing that you're going to have to read my hand language. I ain't nodding or nothing like that. Yes. Every time he shake his head, he get a headache. Now beat your child like that. <laughs> ah. 
shoot, shoot, shoot. Jesus canceled the spirit of running from God. Imagine that. He canceled the spirit of running from God. So now you don't ever have to struggle with running from God no more. You can endure hardship as a good soldier of the Lord. You can take on your cross without fear, without double-mindedness, and without stress. Saints, the blood of Jesus was so powerful because the blood of Jesus made you a superwoman, a superman. You often wonder, why would God let me go through the stuff that I go through? Because you're a superman. You're a superwoman. You won't know that you're superman or superwoman until you go through super, 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 super trouble, super trials, super soakers. <laughs> Need five people to share this broadcast. Now, <laughs> now, <laughs> now, saints, let me just say this to you. If Jesus canceled out running from God, he not, you, you can't only just do it with your actions. You got to do it with your mouth. So let me show you what he canceled running from God. This is powerful. I never preached this. But the angel of the Lord just whispered to me and said, say it like this. This is powerful. Thank you, Jesus. Arrhenius is standing in front of me. He says, say it like this. This is powerful. Look what, look what Jesus is, is, is trans, transferring this message to my personal angel. Look, look what the Lord just said to me. You can't cancel out a spirit with just actions. There has to be words. So watch what Jesus did to cancel the spirit of running from God. He reenacted the action. But then this is what he did in the Garden of Gethsemane. But then he told everybody, as Jonah was in the earth three days and three nights, or he was in the fish belly three days and three nights, so the son of man shall be in the earth, the heart of the earth. Look what he did. He talked Jonah, which Jonah was the architect of running from God in his day. Because he ran from God. He caught that ship. He was in that ship. He went to sleep in that ship. Now, here's what's crazy. Jesus not only acted out by canceling, canceling the spirit or running from God. But now he speaks on the same spirit that was running from God. Jonah. Ain't that powerful? So now you receive supernatural fearlessness. Be strong and of good courage. All this week, you got the power to enjoy this week. You're not looking at your finances. You're not looking at how you're going to do this. None of that stuff matters. This is your life. Protect your heart. Protect your soul. Protect your mind. Protect your joy. Protect your inspiration. Protect your confidence, your momentum. And enjoy this week. Praise God and give him glory. Thank him. Saints, let me tell you something. Some people put their, their hope in their children. They put their hope in their parents. They put their hope... Saints, I don't pit my hope in none of that stuff. What if, what if Jesus called your child home at three years old? You made your child your God. What you going to do? Now you're going to get angry at God because you made your child your God. Imagine that. You, Saints, you ever wonder why people argue with God? Because the person that got hit was their God. Why my grandma died? How old was your grandma? She was 156. That nigga was... She was overdue. What you what you crying for? Why we on social media crying? She was she she had fifty plus years. She ain't just have a hundred years. She had hundred and fifty plus years. What did you want from Jesus? Jesus let her breathe. That lady was ready to go. 
Saints, you know how many people Jesus makes sure that the person die while they in another state. Because you know what they do? They'll come to the hospital. Lord, please don't let them die, Jesus. Jesus said, all right, just because she's going to go about five more hours. And I got things I need to do. Um, Raphael, go and heal the body, please. Thank you. All right, five more days. All right, thank you. You ever wonder why people die and the other person is in the other state? Jesus got to strategize. Because <laughs> they won't call the person back. Number one, they can't pee. They got to pee inside of a, a tube. They can't eat. They got to eat from a tube. What? Let them go on with their business. Let them go on with their business. See, sometimes your prayers can be so selfish. Why you won't let them go on with their business? They don't want to be here. They're suffering. And then Jesus want to take them. That's, a, that's healing too. If he take them and pick them in a new body, that's healing. If he pick them in a new body, give them a glorified body, that's healing. It's a miracle. They want to go to heaven, saints. And they be up there about to go to the pearly gates. She happy because she used to smoke weed, but she got delivered at 48. <laughs> she happy shooting. She up at the gate. She about to get in. And you up there talking, Lord, no, send that spirit back. Lord, no. She like, no, nigga, stop. No, nigga, stop. I'm trying to get to heaven, huh? I done made it. Stop. And they up there, please, Lord. Don't do this, Lord. You remember your word, Jesus. You remember your word. You said in your word, with long life, Psalm 91, with long life, will I satisfy them and show them my salvation. And then they done come back down into the body. They mad as I don't know what. You up there looking at them inside of two. You know, they're tossing. Ah! Came back, they're looking at you like you was a you was a trifling one. You don't call my spirit back. I was about to go on by my reward. What you do that for? I, you, I gotta come back to this earth realm where I gotta say no to demons. I gotta I gotta fight the good fight of faith every single day to try not. They're they're looking at you bad. Saints, just imagine how sometimes your prayers are not in the will of God because you're running from God. This is very powerful. Imagine how many times your prayers are not in the will of God because you're running from God and you asking him to do things that is not even his will because you in a Jonah state and you about a couple moments from getting into the fish belly and you don't even know that your prayers are in error because you running from God. You know the best prayer that you can pray when you don't know what to pray? Lord, let your will be done. That's the best prayer you can pray. It'll reposition you right in the will of God. The best prayer you can pray when you don't know what to pray. Don't start going off at the mouth. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes that let your words be few, that the Lord is in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be few. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. There are seasons where Jesus don't want to talk so much with his mouth. He want to talk with his signals. And when you get in those signal seasons, you got to pray like that. Lord, let your will be done. It's not about you having so much clarity. It's about you using the knowledge that you already have, working with the knowledge you already have, flowing with the grace that you already have, and mastering your day, your moments, your excellence excellence, your perfection, moving in the ways of God every single moment. It's not about finding out the big picture. It's about focusing on the small instruction at the moment. When you're in seasons like that, let your will be done. That's how you talk to the Lord. When you in seasons where you don't know what he's doing, Lord, let your will be done. I'm praying for your will. Father, let your will be accomplished. I submit myself to your will. 
See, money cometh worketh by divine surrender. See, saints, you can't even sow until you surrendered. You can't even sow until you start running from God. Because oftentimes we run from sowing because we're running from God. Saints, do you know how many people are okay with fake relationship with God? What's your relationship with God? Well, I read my Bible. Oh, this is what I do. I wake up. I wake up. I drink me a cup of coffee. In the background, there's a music playing in the background. That's a famous song that I always listen to right before I go into tongues. The best part of waking up is folders in your cup. I always play it every morning. Right before I do my medic medi medications, <laughs> my medication is always playing in the back before I go into tongues. The best part of waking up is folders in your my babo little It done stepped into tongues off. Right, right before they get to the finish part, the boy be on the seat like mama, let it finish. The best part of way. <laughs> so, so every time the boy, every time the boy, he don't want to hear her going to tongues. So every time he got evil spirits inside of him. So every time he know the commercial about to come on, he turn the TV off. Uh-uh. Not today, Satan. <laughs> you just beat me across the head like this. Earlier today. <laughs> you beat me in the head. I still got scar wounds. I still got migraine. Hey, no, we ain't doing this. Turn this thing off. I already know. After this commercial with the Chachia Chachia pet. Chachia Chachia pet. Next minute, they're going to come on with best part of waking up. It's Folgers in your cup, and she, oh, no more shaking, not today. I ain't letting you do it. <laughs> You're not going to do it today, Satan. Not today, Satan. Mm -mm. Turn the TV. She up there asking her son, why you turn the TV? Mommy, I ain't turn the TV. I'm trying to find something. ESPN is on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He turned to the next channel. He watching ESPN. ESPN said, we're going to break right now. The next commercial is the best part of waking. <laughs> you can't even be wealthy until you fu fully surrender to Jesus. Wealth, write this down. Is God rewarding you for the surrender of your will to him? If you're taking notes, write it down. Wealth is God rewarding you for the surrender of your will to him. Write this down. There are levels to wealth. And there are levels to surrender. The higher your surrender, the higher your wealth. The higher your surrender, the higher your wealth. Wealth is God rewarding you for self-restraint. Wealth is God blessing you for avoiding your own appetite to feed him. Oh, Jesus. Are you catching this? Wealth is God rewarding you for avoiding your own appetite to feed him. Praise God. Praise God. You caught that? You caught that? This Bible just sexy. It's just sexy as I don't know what. Woo! Sexy behind Bible. Shoot. Bible just sexy as it can be. Just, just a sexy Bible. Saints, you know I be daydreaming about buying, uh, buying a new Bible. Oh boy, my Bible's cost in the hundreds. Just sexy Bible. What what's the saints? This your whole life, your whole rich, the money cometh anointing is in here. If you get this and make this your first love, 
The money cometh anointing is in here. Look what it say right here. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 11. Wealth gotten by vanity. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished. But he that gathers by labor shall increase. You, call, you write that down? Go Proverbs 13, 11. Proverbs 13, 11. Do you see what it says? Wealth gotten by vanity. What is wealth gotten by vanity? It said that shall be diminished. What's wealth gotten by vanity? Rebellion. Vanity is the opposite of being led by the Holy Spirit. Vanity is the opposite of taking divine instructions. Vanity is the opposite, is the enemy of sowing. Write that down, saints. My God, I love that. If you take a note, write that down. Vanity is the enemy of sowing. So when we deal with vanity, we're dealing with the enemy of sowing. Vanity does not sow. All right? So when, when we deal with vanity, it's another spirit, it's another behavior, it's another functionality. Vanity is where you withhold yourself from Jesus. Vanity is the focus on what's going to lead you to hell. So saints, when you have a wrong thought, that's a vanity thought. You got to cast that thought down. And saints, let me teach you a higher level of, of, of the mind of Christ. When you get a thought, think about how is this thought going to unlock heaven on earth for me? How is this thought going to please Jesus? How is this thought going to cause me to fulfill what he already assigned me to do? If that thought will not empower you to fulfill your current assignment, crush the thought. Break it, break it, break, break, break it. If the thought not going to bring you into a higher level of obedience and surrender and self-control and righteousness and wisdom and glory and power, break the thought. Break it because it's not from God. It's vanity moving. It's not going to help you get into the place of pleasing God. Serving God, loving the Holy Spirit with all your body, heart, and soul. You're not going to make it if you don't break it. Don't let thoughts linger inside of you that's not bringing you no increase in your walk with Jesus Christ. If it's not bringing you increase, break the thought. You got to break us anointing for your thought life. You ever heard that before? You ever heard that before? You have a breaker's anointing for your thought life. You ever heard that before? You have a breaker's anointing for your thought life. There are several things that breaks wrong thoughts or the flow of wrong thoughts. And it opens up a, a, a canal, a canal, a channel for divine thoughts to come to you. One of the things that break up satanic thoughts is praise. Saints, I've been in seasons of my life that the warfare is so strong that if you ain't highly anointed, you will die. Not only will you die, you, you will either kill yourself or kill somebody. Saints, I, I, I've been, a, I've, I know what to be at the height of pressure. And, and when I tell you pressure, I mean the pressure that is greater than what you could fathom. Sweat turned to blood pressure. See, saints, 
when the Bible said that his sweat turns to drops of blood, that's, see, the flesh is dying in that place because your spirit is now walking in the earth in full capacity with the Father. And so when you link up with the Father like that, he trusts you to handle heat the way, same way he does. But how are you going to be trained as a God if God don't let you go through what he go through? You understand? So when uh, Psalm 82 verse 6 says that ye are gods, a lot of people run with that and say, I'm a God. But do you know what that means? You're going to have to go through God things. So God loves and he's still hated. God delivers and he's still complained against. God helps and he's still slandered. God teaches and, and people are still uh, refusing knowledge. God reaches and people are still choosing hell. So when it says ye are gods, you have the anointing to be sustained when you go through God situations. See, the storm where Jesus went to sleep in and the disciples got nervous was a divine route and a divine training for Godship. So God was training them in that storm to be him. But it took a storm. Saints, by the way, man, it was storming today. It was storming wild. Um, I woke up to uh, the wind beating against my window. So I looked up. And I was laying down. Satan said, uh, this is what Satan said. Satan said this. Satan said, uh, get out the way. Your Jesus about to kill you. I said, forget you, Negro. Nah, come on, man. Now, I can't tell you what I really said. I ain't said forget you. I said something else, but it's too hot. You know what I'm saying? And so, 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 he tried, he tried to pay a little scare, scare, scare. So I laid myself down. <laughs> and then, then my, my daughter gave me a Versace robe. What was her name? Macy gave me a, a Versace robe. I, I mean, I put my Versace robe on like this here. <laughs> Listen. Walked inside of my long bathroom. Before I got to my walk-in closet. Jesus spoke to me. He said, son, this storm not for you. You know how you know how we roll. He said, son, I'm here, but it ain't for you. He said, you good. He said, storm not for you. I wasn't going to lay back down. <laughs> Everybody was rolling in the area. Everybody's lights got cut off. My lights, the only lights that stayed on. That I have knowledge of. I got a white neighbor that smell like mayonnaise in the spirit. Not in the natural, in the spirit. The one that got mad at me the time, Tonsom, she called the cops to watch watch me, to, to stalk me. She called the cops. Saints, I'm telling you, if you're going to be prosperous, stuff going to happen. Like, you just got to forgive people and just walk in love. She called the cops to, to, uh, study my driveway when I'm driving out my driveway and when I when I go 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 down the pathway and stuff like that. She, she assigned the cops to watch. Saints, I'm telling you this for a reason because when you blessed and prosperous, the devil gonna fight you for no reason. He gonna try to bully you. So watch this here. When you sow your way out and get your wealth and get your money, he's still gonna find other ways to try to grab your attention from you. You understand? So he, even after you get your money, he's still going to try to fight to bring some type of sorrow to you if he, if he can. But if you're not wise, he can steal your, your focus and your enjoyment. But if you're wise, you'll know that's just the devil. So watch this. So the same lady that was doing that stuff, I ain't never bothered her. The lady the other day, she, she tried to come up to me, tried to talk to me. She never see me. People don't get to talk to me. I, I, 
I'll send you to a second party. All right. <laughs> so, so one other day, I think, like a Jehovah, not Jehovah Witnesses, they don't come to my neighborhood. I think they come to all the hoods. So if you got Jehovah Witnesses, come knock on your door. It's because you're the hood. Um, <laughs> so other day, a boy had came, looked like Lil Nas, Uptown Road. They did. They, 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 he had the horses in the back, I think, in the spirit. Um, he came to the door looking all Eddie Murphy like an Urkel like. All right. So he came to the he came to the door. He knocked at the door. He can he couldn't see. Be trying to sell you. They did they, they try to sell you shoe. So the the white lady came up to my 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 door. All right. Nah, she ain't come up to my door. I was driving out on my driveway. I was already in the street. She ran out into the street. Ran up to me. I was. I wasn't even about to open up my window. I was about to scream. I'm like, man, they saying what you like, lady. I don't talk to you. <laughs> I know what you about. You giant and and catch me riding dirty and catch me riding dirty. We rolling, they hating. <laughs> now, the other day, now other day, she came out, she tried to start a conversation with me. I know she got blue something now. Um, don't think about it. She tried to start a conversation with me. I, and she was trying to say, oh, I'm just so sorry that I, I you know, I you know sometimes I have vehicles out here. I'm like, lady, I don't watch what you got going on. Like, you, you is trying to get my attention on you. I don't know what you doing. I don't see you. All right, all right. And 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 meanwhile, uh, you know, I'm gonna tell you like this, and I'll just be real raw with you. Them, them. Uh, <laughs> should I say that? <laughs> they be having something else on their mind. <laughs> they be having for experimental purposes. <laughs> so you're like, lady, come on, just stop the bull crap. All right? You gonna come over here smell like hot dog water. Let's just stop the bull crap, all right? So the the storm hit real strong today. It hit real strong today. Uh, <laughs> and when it hit real strong today, all right. So here's the thing: their house got flooded. The other houses, their power got knocked out. They got flooded. They sucking water out of their house. My house, the only house they ain't touch. No tree fell down on my house. Nothing touched me. Not one thing. Not one thing touched me. Not one thing touched me. Now I say this because we hail King Jesus. Power of the Holy Spirit. You got a covenant with Jesus Christ. The deaf angel got to pass over you. Because it's not for you. But watch this. God is over the deaf angel. Some of y'all didn't read Colossians chapter 2 verse 10 right. It says that you are complete in him. Who is the head of all principality and power. Do you know what that means? If you are complete in him that is the head of all principality and power, that means that he is over every demon spirit that will ever attack you or target you. 
So if you ever got the revelation that Jesus is actually in charge of the spirit that is assigned to attack you, he got authority over that spirit and they listen to him like the boss. If you just do what the Lord tell you to do, he going to speak to the spirit. And when he says, sit your So when you saw him, every locust demon, every canker worm demon, every palmer worm demon is subject to Jesus. So when he ready, money cometh is going to work for you, whether or not somebody don't want it to work for you because Jesus is over all the spirits that will even attempt to stop it. Jesus is over every spirit that will stop you from moving in wealth. Your prosperity is not tied to flesh and blood. It's tied to the prophet, because the prophet is not flesh and blood. That's God realm. It's tied to the prophet. And as long as you are listening to the prophet, your prosperity is sure. Saints, why do you think that there's such a fight to get you away from a prophet? Because the devil don't want you to prosper so that you can have the same story as every other fool that went before you. You imagine that. How Satan wants you to look like every other fool. The prophet is God in the flesh. Why, why is he calling down fire from heaven if he don't run the heavens? Listen, can I go inside? Oh, watch this. Go inside a police officer's house and say, turn the water on. You know what the police officer going to do is arrest you because it's not yours. Why would you go into a police officer and it's not your place and command different orders in a place that doesn't belong to you. So when you understand this, now when Elijah is calling down fire, if he calling it down from earth, then it's cool. He's just a normal man. But if he calling it down from heaven, oh shoot. Wait, 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 wait. Elijah, only God is in charge of heaven. So if you take in charge of heaven and telling heaven what to do, oh my God, oh, only God, only God tell, only God tell heaven what to do. Oh, all, uh, even John the Baptist says, there's one coming mightier than I. And he'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and what? Fire. So, if John the Baptist is saying that he the one with the fire, Jesus, and Elijah is calling down fire, I want you to catch this. Elijah is calling down Jesus. Oh, my God. He, oh, shalava sokole falama. Elijah is calling down Jesus. He that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He calling down Jesus. See, as long as he was calling down Jesus, he wasn't bothered about this life. As long as he was calling down Jesus, he wasn't worried about the principalities and the powers and the rulers of the darkness of this age. As long as he was calling down Jesus, he was in power, he was ruling, and he was in dominion. Oh! As, as, as long as he was calling down Jesus. You don't understand. When you sowing, you calling down Jesus. When you praising, you calling down Jesus. When you thanking God, you calling down Jesus. When you casting down imaginations, you calling down Jesus. When you walking in the spirit, when you fall in the spirit of God, when you believe a prophet, you calling down Jesus. He 
See, Elijah was powerful when he was calling down Jesus. Watch. Remember, John the Baptist came on the scene and Jesus revealed that John the Baptist is the spirit of Elijah. You see, Elijah did the same thing in both bodies. When he was calling down Jesus through John the Baptist, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of, uh, sins of this world. He was good. But then when he stopped calling down Jesus, now there's an issue going on. As long as he calling down Jesus, he good, he fine. But when he stopped calling down Jesus, now there's something going on where, where, where there's, a, there's a separation between him and the Lord. And then wrong decisions come on the scene. Now he making wrong decisions. His focus wrong. Calling down Jesus. You ever heard that before? Calling down Jesus. When he was calling down fire, he was calling down Jesus. Saints, the prophets of Baal were from Jezebel. What, what did Jesus talk about in Revelation 2.20? He talked about the spirit of Jezebel. He talking about how, how he going to bring judgment and stuff like that. Well, what is Elijah doing when he called out fire on the prophets? Saints, we call them prophets of Baal, but really they was prophets of Jezebel. She was the voice over them. So what you got to catch is that Elijah was calling down Jesus before Jesus had even come on the scene in the natural. He calling down Jesus. Here's why I'm telling you. When you call down Jesus, your mind going to be the way it's supposed to be. You're going to have fullness of wisdom, fullness of energy, fullness of power. Wisdom is the energy of your mind. Joy is the energy of your soul. Excellence is the energy of your decisions. Wisdom is the energy of your mind. Somebody take notes, write that down. Wisdom is the energy of your mind. Joy is the energy of your, um, what I said? Joy is the energy of your what? Soul? Huh? Huh? Why everybody just writing wisdom? Did you get the joy? You got top class teaching. Top class teaching. Holy Spirit don't want you to be troubled no more. Your days of being troubled are over. Your days of being doubled are here. Your days of being troubled are over and your days of being doubled are here. Saints, prosperity is graduation from sin. If you take a note, write that down. Prosperity is graduation from sin. Wealth is graduation from rebellion, and the blessing is graduation from uh, struggle. Because saints, sin and struggle are two different things. Sin is the actual act, but struggle is when you entertain the act. <clears throat> you understand? So sin is a finishing product. Struggle is the process to the finishing product. Did you catch that? That's powerful. Sin is the finishing product. But stress, uh, a str struggle is the process to the finishing product. So you can cut the process. The, when you do the sin, the sin already done. You already did that. You can't cut the sin. You See, saints, let me just tell you this. You got delivered from sin. So you got delivered from making the finished product manifest. When Jesus destroyed sin, he destroyed the finishing pro pro product, the, the finishing product 
in your decision of struggle. So what struggle would manifest Jesus killed it? So that's why I preach there's no struggle. Because if there was struggle, then there'll be sin. But Jesus destroys sin. Go to Romans chapter 8. Go to Romans chapter 8. Let's look at this. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. All right, let me show you something real quick. Romans chapter 8 says this. Let's go to verse three for the law, for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. You know what I mean? The law that was being made, nobody could fulfill the law. Nobody could do the law. But what Jesus did was condemn sin in the flesh. So what does this mean? That means that he destroyed its power. Condemnation means no more opportunity. Are you catching this? This is very powerful. Condemnation means no more opportunity. So when you see that he condemned sin in the flesh, that means that he gave sin no more opportunity to rule you. So watch. Sin not getting the opportunity from Jesus is only getting the opportunity from you. When you not focus, when you're not in the spirit, when you're not in the, 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 the flow of joy and, and um, praise and thanksgiving, it don't got opportunity. Why you think the Bible said give no place to the devil? Because God ain't going to give him no place. Nor does he have authority to demand place. You just got to open it up. But watch, he condemned sin in the flesh. Now, let me leave this elementary stuff. Let's deal with the big stuff. See, you talk like that when you get a revelation. Let's, this is this small stuff. Let's go to the big stuff now. Now, your riches is the perfect will of Jesus Christ. And supernatural money is scheduled all this week for you. June is saturated with money favor and money power of God. All your debts are no longer existing in the spirit. They will be no longer existing in the natural. The power of the Holy Ghost will make it evidence. God not just going to give you the knowledge. He going to give you the demonstration. Of supernatural money. All your wealth is connected to you trusting the prophet of God. You trust in, if you, if you hear the voice of the prophet and you believe the prophet, Jesus going to make sure that you move in well.
He going to make sure you move in increase. He going to make sure you move in abundance. Now, let me, let's deal with this. Uh, Proverbs 13, 11 says, Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished. Vanity is against what the Lord has taught you. It's distraction. It's defeat. It's foolishness. It's rebellion. It's the opposite form of functionality. And it says if you get wealth by these means, it shall be diminished. That means that you're not going to enter into eternal life with it. You're going to lose it eventually. It's not eternal. You're going to lose it eventually. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished. Diminished mean that it's going to decrease eventually. It's going to die eventually. It's not going to remain. That's why Jesus says, store up treasures in heaven. How do I store up treasures in heaven? It's when I take myself and what I have and I sow it to Jesus. Because now I'm telling Jesus, I know that this is temporary. I know that this life is temporary. temporary. I know that this body is temporary. I know that my time here is temporary. So what I'm going to invest what I have and myself, and I'm going to give it to you and to your work and to your will. And then when you do that, you store up the treasures in heaven. So then you really get to enjoy it forever and ever. But the people that get it by sin and in rebellion and disobedience to God and, and feuding and conflict, some people get wealthy off of drama. Saints, you know that, right? There's some people, uh, watch the secular world. They make all their money off of drama. You ever watch Love and Hip Hop? They make their money off of drama. Somebody got to fight somebody. I never forget when Evelyn threw that glass. Whoop, whoosh, threw that glass. Whoop, whoosh. Evelyn, those days, that was when that was when Love and Hip Hop was on fire. Now it's just it's just predictable. I don't even I don't watch TV, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> well, I watch TV. I just don't watch the channels that I got on the TV. Let me get that straight. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Evelyn we used to be wildin' on that show. That's when Ocho Cinco. Shoot. Basketball wives. They were wildin' out on them. Girl, you're not going she done through the done through the glass. She done she she done did it. Her wig fell off on the other side. Now you don't understand what I'm saying, player. That thing went go hit her. She, her wig flew off on the other side, man. She went go dodge the, the doggone glass, man. I, listen, this the glass right here. You you trying to get? No, I'm not. She, the wig done fell off. Blessed be God. The wig done that gonna fell off. I said the wig done daggone fell off. I said the wig done daggone huh, fell off. Shoot. Let's go to Mark chapter 4 verse 30. It says, whereunto shall you liken the kingdom of God or what shall you compare it? It said, it is like a grain of mustard seed. It is like a grain of mustard seed. See, the kingdom of God is like a grain of mustard seed. It's, so it's about sowing. Saints, you watch this in your word of God. I, I advise some of y'all read uh, Mark chapter 4 and go to verse 26 and verse 30 and, and, and study it in your intimate time and just meditate on it. For the earth, um, let's go to verse 30. What shall you compare the kingdom of God to? It is like a grain of mustard seed when it is sown in the earth. When it is sown in the earth. When it is sown in the earth. Now watch this. It says that the grain of mustard seed must be sown where? Did it say a man of God? No. I'm about to shock you and about to take you 360. I, I'm about to shock you with this revelation. The seed is not supposed to be sown into a man of God. 
<laughs> the seed is not supposed to be sown into a man of God. You never heard me say, you never heard me preach it like this before. <laughs> Some of y'all nervous. Ugh. Listen, you gotta make sure you wear a bigger shirt when you open up the door and you got visitors. Cause you can't be walking around like this. <laughs> you can't be walking around like this. They start shooting. You talk, where they shooting? Well, that's sure. I'm going to put a white jacket on you. See, that is not normal. I'm going to put this on you, too. You see how you just did that? Where they shoot? Where they shoot? Nah, that is, that is suspicious behavior. That behavior, that type of behavior is unacceptable. The seed is supposed to be sown into the earth. Somebody write the word earth. Somebody write the word earth. Somebody write the word earth. Now, take the TH and write, like, pick that little line and pick earth. Like, E-A-R and T-H. Watch this. To be sown into the earth. Before you can sow. You have to have an ear to hear. He that let a, he that have an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Watch this here. I'm going to show you something. The seed supposed to be sown into the earth. So it's supposed to be sown in the place that you're hearing the spirit of the Lord. The seed supposed to be sown where the spirit of the Lord has chosen to conversate with you the most. Oh, my God. You, you ever heard me say, stop saying that you want to hear God's audible voice? Because every time Prophet Joshua Holmes come talk to you on Periscope, that's the audible voice of God talking to you. It's him choosing to give you that deep wisdom. That's why your spirit be like, wow. Because that's God talking. He's spending time with you. So hereby you get a revelation that the seed is supposed to be sown into the earth. Because the earth, the first three letters of earth spells ear. And he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Where God's voice is choosing to talk with you the most. Not sometimes. You'll see, don't go where the voice of God speaks to you sometimes. Or where you think that he's speaking to you. The seed go where he talked to you full time. That's why God assigns soil to you. If God assigned many souls to you, you're going to get confused. And that's why many people ain't get their riches because they sow into so much souls. They don't have an actual soil. Saints, do you know that I have done this? As, as I stand in the presence of Jesus Christ, I've met people before. They were like, prophet, you know, I saw into this one, saw into this one, but I ain't got no harvest. I said, okay, well, what you come to me for? <laughs> you say you saw into this one, this one. So what you come to me for? I, I come because I, I know you got anointed and I want you to help me get a harvest. No, I can't help you. Because you're not going to know where the harvest is coming from. You already sowing into many different things. Saints, you ever wonder why the girl on uh, Mari don't know who the daddy is? <laughs> Mari, I don't know who my father I know who he is. It is Elgin. Me and Elgin, he only lasts two minutes. He did it to me. And I know when I went with Elgin that he was a father. And I know that this is Elgin's son. You know how I know? Because Elgin, when he go to sleep, he say, Naji Rumba. And this child, he was one years old, and he started saying, Naji Rumba. So I know the test results come back in. 
Uh, and Maury, Maury liked to glory over that. Uh, he is the test results has come back in. And the winner of the test results has come back in. We have found out that it is not the vibe. He is not the father. There's a 100% chance that he is not the father. This is not his daggone child. You's a hoe. What's going on with you? You is a hoe. I thought you was a hoe when you tried to hit on me. But let's get back to what was going on with this child. She got too many seeds. And the seed came from everywhere. Hello. She don't know how to pinpoint and give a harvest uh, explanation and give a harvest summary because the seed came from everywhere. That's what happened when people sow everywhere. Your harvest probably done came, but you united the location because you sow it all over the place. You don't know where the seed is at. And when the DNA results come back, you don't know. How to tap into the wealth of the seeds that you have sown. So, so I told, I, I've told people, well, I can't help you. Uh, you say that you sowed too many souls. I can't help you. So, what you, what they got to do with me? All right, keep on sowing into your souls. No, no, prophet, I need, I need you. Okay, well, this is what we gonna do. You, you sow into my soul for three months. No other soul. So that you can know the difference. <laughs> if you sow into all these souls, you're not going to know the difference. Because watch this. The soul of a man is the soul of a man. And my soul is not on the same soul as every other man. You understand? So the soul is the soul. And the soul carries the knowledge of God. So if my knowledge at another level. You're not going to know if you're sowing into other souls because you're going to be sowing into other souls. So if they're at grade three and you're trying to get to grade 12, grade three is an enemy to grade 12. That soul level is an enemy because grade three only know grade three. And grade three is persuaded about grade three. Saints, you ever heard people preach? They persuaded about what they believe. And they, there could be more stuff. A preacher can preach, oh, God don't want us to have no wealth. All that is materialistic stuff. God wants us to be worried about souls. It sounds great. Great. Frosted flakes. Tiger. But when you weigh it out. Okay, you said God doesn't want us to have wealth, but he gave us the power to get wealth. So you just told me to rebel against God and to commit wealth witchcraft. And then you told me to win souls. How am I going to win souls if I just rebelled against God and now I want God to work for me to win people to him when I'm not even one to him? You ever thought about that? The people that say win souls, but it's not about don't 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 deal with this wealth. Or it's not God don't want to handle wealth. Okay, okay. So you want me to win people to a God that you haven't even been one to? Because if you was one to Him, you would have believed what He said in His Word. You hate His Word. So how? What spirit is going to cause people to be one to the very God that you not even one to? Foolishness of men. I'll never understand how, how how somebody can talk about money real bad and then at the end of their broadcast they ask you to become a partner in the ministry. This gospel is supposed to be about souls. This gospel is not about no money. This gospel is not about this prosperity. This money is not about this prosperity. 45, 47, dun, 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 dun. this is not about this money. Oh. Uh, uh, those of you all watching this broadcast, if you was blessed by this broadcast, uh, I want you to be prayerful about becoming a partner of this ministry. Nah, pastor, I'm going to be a partner through my prayers. 
That's what I'm going to do. No, no, no. I, I would like for you to become a partner. Um, and do what? Um, exercise generosity. Exercise generosity how? Um, uh, through um, the act of unselfishness. Unselfishness how, Pastor? Um, you know, in the Bible, it says, uh, in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, it says, give. Give what, Pastor? I can give you these Cheetos. I got some hot Cheetos in the back of my trunk. I got some hot Cheetos. They might get a little warm. They might melt in your mouth. But I got these hot Cheetos. Uh, do you want me to give it to you like that? Because I'll give it to you like that. I'll give you some Cheetos. Uh, no, no, no. Um, in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, uh, Jesus said uh, to give. But give what, Pastor? You taught us in the sermon that you don't want no money. So what is you trying to tell us to give? You told us that the gospel is not about getting no money. Um, well, um, so what do you want me to give, Pastor? Um, um, there's something called seed. What is a seed? I got some. I, what I got? I got some sunflower seeds inside my back seed. Me and my little daughter was eating this sunflower seeds. It was so good. It hurt my teeth a little bit. So what I did was I tried to eat it real nice and slow. I, I was listening to Arkansas. I was talking about bumping and grind. Nothing real love. So it was a little slow bump and grind. So I don't know what's going on, but I, I want to understand. Give me an understanding. I got some sunflower seeds in the back. What kind of seeds you talking about? No, 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 no. Um, I'm not talking about the seed. Uh, that you're eating the sunflies. Uh, there's a seed in the Bible uh, that you're supposed to get. Well, what you talking about, Pastor? Because I told you I'm going to give you the seed, but it's sunfly seeds. Well, you can't accept the seed that the Bible said except the seed. This uh, this is this is contrary because you talk about you want to see I got some sunfly seed. So why can't I sow the seed into you? Um, the Bible talks about a seed. Um, but, uh, when you sow the seed, well, what is the seed, pastor? Um, it is a gift. Well, what is a gift? I got a gift yesterday from Elroy. He gave me some gifts. He gave me two shoes. One of the shoes was, was, was seven and a half. The other shoe was seven. Cause what happened is I ain't got no ankles. <laughs> I ain't got no ankles. So all uh, my stuff is fake. So I, I put the shoes on and they don't even bother me. I got supernatural feet. So I got a gift from Elroy. What, what is you talking about? No, no. This gift is something that you sow into God. He don't want to say his money. But saints, money is dominion to fulfill your divine assignment on the earth. Write that down. Money is dominion to fulfill your divine assignment on the earth. Money is dominion to fulfill your divine assignment. On the earth. You imagine? Money is dominion to fulfill your divine assignment on the earth. So watch this, saints. It's a mantle for accomplishments for Jesus. It's a mantle for accomplish accomplishments for Jesus. So that you can accomplish some things for the Lord. Money is a, is, a, is a grace for you to drink the cup of the Lord without stress. To drink his cup without uh, mental warfare. You caught that? Money is a is a grace to drink the cup of the Lord without mental warfare. Since you notice that um, 
Bible said that money is a defense. Money defends your mind. Saints, let me tell you something. When you sow in seed, you actually protecting yourself from becoming a demon in your thoughts. Because you're sowing it into the earth. And the earth is, remember I told you, the first three letters is ear. Because he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Meaning God going to send a preacher to you that's going to feed you. A prophet that's going to feed you. And going to have your ear full of the report of the Lord. Going to have your ear full of the wisdom of God. Going to have your ear full of the knowledge of the Holy Ghost. Going to have your ear full of truth and knowledge and grace and power and liberty and Holy Ghost. And the gospel. So as you sowing into them. All your focus is on the gospel. Because you're sowing into your ear. You're sowing into the earth. You're sowing into where your ear is being reminded of what Jesus said. Your ear is being reminded of the instruction. It's being reminded of the vision. It's being reminded of the promise. It's being reminded of your virtue. Reminded of your dominion. Reminded of the power of God. Reminded of what Jesus told you when nobody was around you. That's why the seed destroys deception. That's why the stronger you sow, the lesser you hear demons. The stronger you sow, the lesser you hear demons. So saints, evil spirits don't want to keep on talking to somebody that's crushing their head. You heard this? Evil spirits don't want to keep on talking to you if you crushing their head. If you crushing their head, they don't want to keep on having a conversation with somebody that's going to injure them. They don't want to keep on having proximity to somebody that's going to destroy their strategies and embarrass their authority and make them look like they don't have any power and strip them of all of their weapons and remove all of their, their minds, uh, uh, mindsets to come against you. So saints, hereby we find a mystery that I can resist the devil through sowing. No, no, if, if this is what the kingdom is all about, if this is what after, remember the Bible said that the kingdom is not in word, is in power. So if I release the kingdom, Jesus told me, through sowing seed. And this is what the kingdom is all about. He just revealed to me that the seed is the power of God over every demon. So when I got the power of God over every demon, there's nothing by any means shall hurt me when I'm sowing. I can resist any devil. I can break any habit. I can destroy any principality. I can pull down any spirit that's over my city and I can run demons out of my town. What happened with Isaac? Isaac pulled down the principality when he was sowing. He broke the neck of demons when he was sowing. Because the seed is the kingdom of God and is the power of God unto salvation. You know that because Jesus was the father seed that was sown. 
And inside the seed, the seed was everything that you needed to live holy, everything you needed to live rich, everything you needed to live blessed, everything you needed to live uh, 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 free and, and in victory and have justice and have God fight for you and have deliverance and have salvation and have power and wisdom and understanding and knowledge and truth and intelligence and virtue and everything that is lovely, perfect and good. So when you sow a seed, you possessing all of godly traits, all godly DNA. So the seed is the saliva of God. Oh, Jesus. Come on, come on. Some of y'all can't spell. Make sure you go to the dictionary and find saliva. I'm joking around. <laughs> the seed. No, just popping bottles. I'm just drunk in the spirit. That's all. I ain't mean no harm. I, I like I like those of y'all that can't spell because y'all the ones that flow with me the most, doggone it. Shoot. The seed is the saliva of God. So every time you sow Jesus spitting on you and he giving you a transfer of his nature and his nature is riches and he's rich. And he's wealthy and he got plenty of money. He got unlimited money. He got eternal money. So you take on the same nature of God. He's holy and he's rich. So you take on the nature of being holy and rich. Saints, when you sow in you receive holy money. This is money that the Holy Spirit drives into your hands. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. He drives it into your hands. This holy money. Why? Because the Holy Spirit had you so to unlock it. It's holy money because the Holy Spirit had you so to possess it. It's holy money because the Holy Spirit had you walk in grace to, 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 to take a hold of it. It's holy money because the Holy Spirit destroyed all of your fears, all of your limitation for you to get that seed into the ground and so it can unlock that portal over your life. Now you understand wealth gotten by vanity is wealth gotten by not sowing. That's the world's type of wealth. And remember what the Bible said, the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of, a, of his God and of his Christ. So the kingdoms of this world are going to be embarrassed. So, so th there is a wealth that embarrasses you when you're not sowing. Because if you get that plenty of money, that plenty of money just going to drive you into the judgment seat of Christ where it's not going to look good for you. Because you going the verdict going to come that you was a thief. That you had substance and materialistic things and you wasn't qualified. You was an Esau. Saints, I'd rather be Jacob than Esau. Because Jacob, people going to call you tricky. They're going to call you a lie. They're going to pay all type of name and scandals on you. But at least God said he love you. What? At least God said he love you. At least you ain't living no fake behind relationship with God. It's real. They all say all type of manners are evil against you, but you're rich, you're blessed, you're prosperous, and you're on your way to heaven. You got plenty of money, but God is on your side. He's standing in front of you. He got angels with you. He's standing behind you. The glory of God is your rear guard. They might say stuff about you, but God said, I love you. Jacob, I've loved. Esau, I've hated. I'd rather be Jacob than Esau. Because Esau, everybody going to say nice stuff about you. But you're still a thief and a robber. You be Esau, people going to have nice things to say about you. But you're still illegal. And people going to talk well of you. But you're still illegitimate to God. Because God ain't receiving you. God said, Jacob, I have love. I'm receiving Jacob. Oh, I'm receiving Jacob. Remember? Cain killed Abel. But God still only received Abel because Abel was a true sower 
Abel was honoring God. So it didn't matter. You might have had killed Abel, but Abel is still a sower. And Abel is still sowing even after he died because God is still pleased with him. He's still giving God pleasure even after he died. Saints, your seed will echo you. Oh, my God. Saints, it's deep. Sowing is so powerful that if you keep on sowing, your seed will start echoing to God. The last seed you sowed will keep on being sown even when your hands being still because it's echoing. Oh, my God. Since you never heard that before, at least from right now, this is the power of God on this right now. How I'm preaching this, this is strong. The seed will echo. It will keep on being sown in the mind of God because God keeps on remembering. Wow, that girl sowed that seed like that. Wow, that man sowed that seed like that. That's my son. Wow. So so even though you not keep on sowing the seed, it keep on being sown in God's mind because he keep on remembering that the seed was sown. Wow, I never heard that before. The echoing seed. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Because after Abel died, God still heard the seed because now Abel had became his sowing. So God heard him from the ground, heard his blood because he's still sowing in God's mind. In God's mind, Abel is still sowing seed because Abel is, 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 is a, a supernatural sower. So now God is still Hearing Abel, even after Abel died, God is still honoring him and getting pleasure from him because his seed is echoing. Seed echoes. You can sow so much seed that your seed is echoing to God. That even when you're not sowing and you're on your way to sow, God, like I still hear the seed that you just sowed. I still, you, listen, you sowed that seven days ago, but I still hear it. Because that seed that you sowed, it, it came from your heart. It came from your contemplation. You meditated on that seed. You thought about it. You said, Lord, how could I make you happy today? How, how could I show you my faith? How could I unlock this, 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 this love that I have for you and show you in action and my passion? And I'm going to sow this. And I know you're going to let money come into me. I know that you're going to let supernatural increase come to me. I know that you're going to make me even more wealthier than now. But I praise you for where I am right now. I won't deny you of what I got right now. I'm appreciative for right now. I'm thankful for where I'm at right now. And if you don't take me further, I'm still There are some seeds that you sow out of your appreciation. That seed echo. That seed it replays in God's mind because he know that you sold it from a place of, I want your attention on me, Jesus. The seed captures the attentiveness, the attention of God. The seed captures the attention of God. The seed causes your personal angels to rejoice because now they know that they have assignments. Once that seed get in the earth, Saints, ain't that powerful? I say you don't sow into a man of God. You sow into the earth. You sow into where the spirit of the Lord has chosen to get your ear the gospel. Get you to the next level. Get you into the flow of wisdom. It's this powerful stuff here. Kato sere koshe fele sua. Rele fala mandele kudeaso. Le roto se kile kalava. Reke nevosa. Jalava kalavaso. Reko repe kiri atokoroso. Nalava kapalaso. Rele fan de levos. 
Ira sula kala falamanda. You can make your seed echo to God. This is apostolic, what I'm teaching you, because now you're in another, you graduated. See, you're not at the elementary level. Since we're not dealing with deception and all that different type of stuff no more. That's, that's old things passed away. Do you understand? Saints, I got several lives. You live more than one life. You know newness of life? There's levels to that. Remember he said that you're a new creation? There's levels to being a new creation. Watch. You can buy a car. It can be new, but in old condition. But if you want to take it to the next level of being new, you'll clean the car out. You'll take it to the washer <laughs> and the dry. For, excuse me for saying it like that. Some of y'all like, is he talking about clothes? No, I'm talking about a car. I know it. I know it. I know it. And there's levels to you making that car new. It's a new car because it just got in your hands. But there's levels to the newness. And then once you clean the car, you can upgrade the engine of the car. And that car can have a stronger engine. That's what God do when he give you wisdom and knowledge. Your engine gets stronger. So you're a new creation. But now you got a new engine. You got a new functionality. You got a new atmosphere. And what the Bible says, you go from faith to faith, glory to glory. Why? Because faith and glory are both atmospheric graces. They both atmospheres. So if you go from faith to faith and glory to glory, faith and glory are both releases of atmosphere in your environment. You see that? So you go to new levels of newness of life. There's a newness of life where God set you free from sin, but there's a newness of life where God set you free from debt. He set you free from lack. He set you free from budgets. He set you free from being cheap. Some of y'all are cheap. When I say cheap, I don't mean that you're a wise spender. I say you cheap because I'm saying like sometimes you think about stuff and you think hey, that's too big for me. I'll never have that. Who? Who? Where? Where? If you keep on sowing and be a steward of what you currently have, you will have that. Even if God got to have somebody sow it into you. Saints, you know, I mastered humility to such a degree. I don't, I, don't, I don't have to have the stuff that I have. But saints, do you know that God will have people sow stuff into me? That's rich in quality. Because what's going on? He, he wanted to get into my hands. But he know that my mind... Always thinking about how can I get this money into the gospel? How can I get this money into the gospel? How can I get this money into the gospel? That he'll have somebody give it to me. And then what you going to do? <laughs> my mother bought me a guitar. I'm about to be. And walk my way down the uptown road. Nantini won't know me. I'm going to turn the dag on the television. She about to go start talking in tongues. Shoot, this is about to be a commercial. Come on, shoot. It's about to be a commercial. Toss the best part of waking now. It's for Jersey. Horamoshi Kataramasha Katarananda. Nedadosi Katalamasha. I should have bought a Fanta. Fanta, Fanta. Don't you want a Fanta, Fanta? Now the Fanta commercial done came on. Come on, let's turn this television because she's about to go in. Television not turning right because they ain't got no batteries. Somebody done stole the batteries. I thought some they had a coffee maker inside them. The best part of waking up is forges in your cup. Come on, let's get let's get this off because she up there done went up in time. Oh no no here we go again. You just I ain't forget you beat me in the head. You beat me in the head. You was getting some head, but you got mine. <laughs> you done beat me in the head. <laughs> the best part of waking up. The, the commercial done came on twice. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 11. <laughs> 
Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished. But he that gathereth, gathereth. There's an anointing to gather. He that gathereth, there's an anointing to gather. Say, say, Father, as I sow, <laughs> as I sow, I receive. The anointing to gather. As I sow. I receive the anointing to gather. As I sow. Thy labor shall increase. Now this labor, the Bible already said labor not to be rich. So how would I get wealth and riches by this type of labor? Because this labor is me sowing. I'm sowing in this labor. In this labor, I'm not working 55 jobs and killing myself. What I'm taking, what I work for, and I'm being a wise steward of it, and I'm sowing. I'm being a wise steward of it and I'm giving. I'm being a wise steward of it and I'm walking in righteousness. And when I do that, now God can take me into riches and wealth that I don't have to worry about going to hell for. Now, saints, I'm going to tell you, all this week, receive supernatural money moving for you. Receive it as you're sowing, as you're honoring God financially. You're moving with angels. You're moving with the power of the Holy Spirit. And his grace shall blow you out of every issue, trial, and burden in your life. The seed removes burdens. It breaks chains. And it receives God's riches. Let's pull money coming. The seed will take you to the next level. It'll take you to the next level. Now, you heard some things that's real powerful. We dealt with the echo and seed tonight. We dealt with the echo and seed. That's very powerful. We dealt with uh, we dealt with how God could take your sowing and He can pour down the principality in your region. How He can destroy the head of spirits that silently talk to you when you alone. How the seed is God's DNA, his character, his nature, his saliva being imparted to you. Money coming to me now. Not underneath this mantle, it's crushed. 
every financial demon is crushed. 